Hey guys, and welcome back to another YouTube video. So in today's video, I'm continuing with my Pi game programming series, and we're gonna be moving on to the ninth tutorial. So in this tutorial, what I'm gonna be showing you is how to add sound effects uh, and how to add music. And we're also gonna do the collision between the two characters. So just as we have the bullets colliding with our uh, our goblin and we have the little health bar going there, now we're gonna have our man colliding with our goblin and we're gonna have something happen when well, when they collide. So what I want to start with is the sounds. So in Pygame, we're able to have something called music and then sound effects. So the music is going to continually play in the background and our sound effects are going to play when we call them. So I just want to show you to start here. I'm going to get my uh, my folder here that I store my game in. I've downloaded a few sound effects here. So I have these two dot uh, WAV files. So this bullet and this hit, uh, and then I have, where's the other one here? This is my music.mp3. So in Pygame, the sound effect files have to be .wav, and your music files can be either uh, .wav or uh, .mp3. Now, uh, what we're going to be doing here is we're just going to pretty much have it all around the program so that whenever you shoot the bullet, you're going to hear a sound effect, and then whenever the bullet hits the goblin, you're going to hear a sound effect, and then in the background, we're going to have music playing uh, the whole time. So let's get started with that. If you guys want to download those files that I just showed you, go ahead and go down in the description below and click on the link. Uh, it says GitHub and then there's a link. And on the GitHub there, it'll have all my uh, all my files. So it'll even have this tutorial file that once this is done uh, and finished and you guys can download all the uh, images and all the music and all the stuff from there. So first what we need to do is we need to load in our sound. So just like we load in our images at the top here, we're going to create a new variable. I'm going to call mine bullet sound and what we need to do here now is just pygame dot mixer dot sound now inside of here all we're going to do is just type the name of our sound effect so mine i called bullet dot wav uh, straightforward pretty easy the next one what we're going to be doing is we have to do the hit sound so i'm just going to do hit sound equals pygame dot mixer dot sound and then in here we just put hit dot wav now for our music it's slightly different but still similar so i'm just going to label mine music uh, make this equal to pygame dot mixer dot music dot load like that and then in here same thing the name of our file so i think i called mine music dot mp3 all right so now to play our sounds uh all we need to do it's very very easy it's just the name of the sound so whatever we have our variable called here dot play like that and then when you do that it's going to play the sound uh, however long it is and yeah it's pretty straightforward for the music uh to play our music continuously what we need to do is we need to do pygame dot mixer dot music dot play i believe and then in here negative one let me just check to make sure that's right uh it's something along the lines of that yeah, so that's exactly how you do it, pygame.mixer.music.play. And this negative one here is going to continuously play it, so even when the song ends, I think mine's like three minutes, it's just going to continually play. All right, so we've got our sounds loaded in. Now it's time to play the sound. So our bullet sound, we're going to play whenever we shoot the bullet. So we're going to scroll all the way down here until when we're hitting the space bar, which should be shooting our bullet here. I'm just going to do bullet sound dot play. And then when our goblin gets hit, we're going to play that hit marker sound. So I'm just going to do it in here. I'm going to do hit sound dot play like that. And there we go. So now if I run the program here, hopefully you guys can hear it. It's not too loud for you. Uh, you can hear the music in the background. And then when I'm shooting my bullet, you should hear that sound. And when we hit the goblin, you hear that sound as well. Now the sounds are slightly delayed, uh, but it's nothing to worry about. We can fix that in another video it's nothing that i'm too concerned about right now okay so now we've got the music in and the sound effects that's pretty easy let's move on to the two characters colliding with each other so before i even go into this loop and start doing the collision like we did with the bullets i want to add a new method to our player character or to our player class so our player class if you remember is at the top of the program here what i'm going to do is i'm just going to define and just like we had with goblin i'm going to define hit as a new method so this is what's going to happen when our goblin is hit. So I want to start with this, or when our player collides with the goblin, sorry. So you guys can do whatever you'd like in this class. 
Uh, personally, what I'm going to do is just have my character gets reset. So he's going to move back over to the left side of the screen and we're just going to subtract 10 from our score. So if you remember in the last tutorial in the top right hand corner, I have our score and that just goes up as you hit the goblin. Um, pretty easy. So to do this, uh, what I'm going to do first of all is just change my characters X and Y. Now our X, I'm going to set equal to 60 and the Y I believe I started at 410. So we're going to leave them on the same plane. Now, after we reset that, what we also need to reset is his walking so that he doesn't look like he's like mid stride as he gets reset. So walk count equals zero, not wall count, walk count like that. And there we go. And now what I want to do after I reset him is I want to have a pause. So maybe for about a second where it shows on the screen what just happened. So you get some feedback rather than our character just flying over to the left and nothing else happening. I want to pop up on the screen uh, saying like negative 10 from score, like you got hit. So to do this, uh, just like we drew text on the screen before, I'm going to create a new font object. I'm going to create font one equals pygame dot font dot s s y s font. And here we're just going to use comic sans ms again or comic sans we'll use. And then we'll have a size of let's do 100 this time because it's going to be fairly large. Now we're going to render a text object here. So we're just going to say text equals font one dot render. And then I'm just going to do negative 10 like this, just showing you simply that you've just lost 10 points. Or you know what? Maybe we'll make it five. Ten's a little bit much. One. And then our color. In this case, it's going to be just red because red is bad. You got hit. And then we're going to draw that on the screen. So win dot blitz. And then in here, we're just going to put text comma. And then now what I'm going to do is I want to draw it in the very center of the screen. So get, I'm going to give you a second to think about how I would do this using just a little bit of math rather than hard coding a number. And how would we get this to uh, go in the middle of the screen? Okay, so I've given you a second pause the video if you still want to continue thinking about it. The way that we do this is by taking the width of the screen. So if the width of our screen, say for example, is this, like this long, we divide it by two. So now we're in the middle of our screen right here. So this is where we are if the if this line of text is our screen. Then what we need to do is we need to find the width of our text object. And we need to divide that by two so that we then know our x coordinate. Because if our text object is this long, then we need its starting x to be over here, right? We can't just put it in the middle of the screen, otherwise, the width of the text is going to continue to move over. And you'll see what I mean here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take our number, uh, the width of our screen, which is 500, and I'm going to divide it by two. So that gives us 250. So you can either leave like that or you can just write 250. And then you're going to subtract from that. Uh, I just like to put in brackets just to make it easier to see here. Uh, we're going to do text dot get underscore width. This is a built in uh, method in Pygame. So you can use this on any text object divided by two. So that should put it right in the middle of the screen for us. And then for the Y coordinate, uh, you guys can decide if you want to do the same thing here with the Y coordinate to put it in the middle of the screen, or you can just type in a number. I usually just put like 200 since the width of our screen is 480. Um, so then it's going to show up near the middle. If you want to do the same thing here, just substitute this with whatever the height of your screen is and then dot get height and it'll do the same thing for you and put it in the middle. Then we're going to do pygame dot display dot update like that. And then after this, what I need to do is I want to pause. So if I had just do this, what's going to end up happening is we're going to see negative 10 flash on the screen really quickly and then it's going to disappear. So I want to pause for a certain amount of time. So it gives the second for the user to see what's actually happened. So I'm going to set a variable. I'm going to set this equal to zero. I equals zero. I'm going to say while I is less than 100 like that. And then in here, I'm going to do pygame dot time dot delay. And then we're just going to put 10 right there. So if you do the quick math here, what's going to end up happening is after I increment I, otherwise we're going to be stuck in an infinite loop there is every time that we go through this while loop, we're delaying 10 seconds. So if we do a hundred times 10, this isn't seconds, sorry. This is like a thousand is one second. So 0 0.1 milliseconds maybe. And we're just going to be multiplying by this. So we should delay for a decent amount of time. You know what? I'm actually just going to make this like 300 to make sure we see it on the screen. And then in here as well, I want to make sure that while we're delaying, we can still exit out of our screen. So if I leave this delay, 
then you'll see what happens is for like one or two seconds that it's on the screen, if I try to click the X button, it's not going to, it's not going to work. It's going to wait until the delay is done and then it's going to work, but I don't want that. I want us to still be able to exit the game. So I'm going to do for event in pygame.event.get and I'm just going to do if event.type equals equals pygame.quit. Same thing we've done down below in one of the first tutorials. We're just going to say i equals 301 and then we're going to say pygame.quit like this. All right, so now we've done that. We've created our method. What we need to do now is the collision between our goblin and our character. So we're going to go down here. And if you remember, we've already done collision between the bullet and the goblin. So what I'm going to do here just to save us a bit of time is I'm just going to copy this whole little statement I have here. Control C and then at the top of our program, I'm going to paste it in like that. Now the indentation might be a little bit off. Uh, it's not too hard to fix. There we go. And I'm just going to start replacing all of my bullet with uh, with my man. So for our first line, what we're going to do here is we're just going to start with man. And now remember, we're not going to use Y. We're going to use the hitbox because that's what we've already defined as the correct coordinates for our for our hitbox, we're going to do man dot one. We don't need this radius anymore because that's already the furthest left position. And then here we're going to do man dot hitbox. And again, it's going to be one plus not the radius man dot hitbox. And this is going to be three. That's our last coordinate our height. Same thing here with the uh, we're going to just do man dot hitbox zero we're going to say plus man dot hitbox two and that's going to be our width let me get a space here fix that and then here we're just, same thing we're just going to replace this all with man dot hitbox zero now that should be everything so now inside here uh we're not going to have hit sound play uh because we don't have a sound effect for when the two collide right now so we're going to get rid of that and then instead of goblin.hit, it's going to be man.hit. And our score, we're going to subtract, uh, what did I say, 5. And then we're going to get rid of this over here. Now we can run our program and see if everything is working. And there we go. You can see we have our sound effects going. Let me mute that. You probably hear any coming to my speaker here. And we have pretty good collision. You can watch here. There we go. So obviously it's not perfect, but uh, that's the best we get. And you can see it delays on the screen for a few seconds. Now I will note, I will let you guys know that depending on how fast your computer is, the delay is going to be different. So you can see my delay is about one, two, three, about three or four seconds. Uh, if you're on a slower machine, it's probably going to be longer. And the reason for that is if I come back up to this line over here is we're just using a while loop, right? So it's pretty much how quickly our while loop can go through uh, all 300 of these iterations. So yes, we do delay inside of it, but with having iterations like this, it's going to be slightly off. It's not a perfect timing mechanism. I just using this uh, to show you a way that you can delay the game without delaying controls. And you'll know what I mean if you ever try to delay the game by just using this. Uh, say, for example, if we just did delay uh, 1000 and then I clicked with my left mouse button, then when the delay was over, the mouse right, uh, left mouse button would click. So even if I wasn't clicking it at that point, it would send the command to the computer saying it was clicked and you're going to see weird stuff happening with your game. All right, so that's been the ninth tutorial in my Pi game uh, programming series. If you guys did enjoy, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you again in the next and last video.